كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم after reaching home sultan murad was quite baffled and surprised when he saw the wife of that deceased person she began to cry ya wali allah o oh, wali of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala o oh, the friend of allah o oh, the close friend of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i was knowing that this is going to happen with you i knew before that is going to happen with you it is crying a lot sultan murad and the people they just they placed the body on the ground and they left now only three three people sultan murad his associate and the wife of the deceased sultan murad asked the woman that i heard the people saying many negative remarks about him but you are saying that ya wali allah o wali of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the pious person of allah didn't you know that he was a, he was a drunkard he was a womanizer she said it is wallah is all a lie he was a pious person he was a wali of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he explained the story of that person she said uh, every day and he would come back from his work and he would earn money some of money he would put for our own expenses our own expenditure and rest he would take along with himself then he would put the wine shop would buy a bottle of wine and bring to the home then he would destroy it and if he would say to allah ya allah i could only do this thing that i could save a muslim brother from drinking the wine so i have destroyed i destroyed this bottle of wine then he would go to the prostitute center there he would uh, he would say to the prostitute that since you need the money i'll give you money for for this night but for this night you have to listen to the quran and many of prostitutes they repented and they became the pious woman so this is and i used to tell my husband that since people don't know about the intention they don't know what they are doing so they are they are passing their remarks or comments upon upon the apparent form of of your action so who will trust you and i i, I Uh, uh, let me tell you i'm sure that if you die nobody will come to offer janaza to you and then my husband would laugh a lot and he would say to me my crazy wife don't worry sultan murad will himself offer my janaza don't, you don't have to be worried about the people sultan murad will offer my janaza and sultan murad is listening to this conversation and his heart is trembled his whole the, the the hair of his body was straight straightened and then he's crying with himself he's weeping he said yes sultan murad will offer his janaza himself and then he took the dead body to the court and he was uh, he he was washed over there shrouded over there and then he made an announcement that all the scholars all the pious all the people are commanded to attend the janaza of this person and sultan murad will offer the janaza himself so sometimes it is a hope of allah subhanahu wa taala which makes up this doesn't mean that a person should uh, put himself actually this depends upon the level of the iman of a person for the common people like us we should not take such risk we should try to yes if you are happen to if you are supposed to do any such thing it must be done uh, clandestinely but there are the levels of the believers they they they, they only fear allah subhanahu wa taala and whatever they do they do it only for the sake of allah subhanahu wa taala one thing is however important that if there is any rotten fruit does it give good smell or the bad smell rotten fruit or filth for that matter however a person covers the filth 
its bad smell will come out sooner or later. However, we, we decorate outside. However, the filth is decorated outside, decorated outside, it will give it its negative, it will, it will give it its foul smell, it is bad smell. On the other fragrance or altar, the however you cover it, it will give it its good smell out. Same is with the amal, good and bad amal. However, a person tries to conceal his bad amal, his bad deeds, it will give it its bad smell out. Allah will make it public. And however, a person tries to conceal his good deeds, not to show it to the people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it public to elevate his position in dunya, to elevate his position in the akhirah. That's why all our predecessors, our salaf as salihun wallahi, whatever good deeds they did, they didn't want the people to know about it. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who managed their stories to become public among the people so that they could learn the lessons from them. On their part, they never wanted this, wallahi, they never wished this. Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, mentions about Imam, Imam al-Shafi, rahimahullah, in his famous book, Ihya Ulub al-Din. Imam Ghazali says, rahimahullah, that Imam al-Shafi, rahimahullah, used to say that I wish my all knowledge be, 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 be carried forward to the all people of the world. But at the same time, I wish nobody know me. My knowledge be promulgated among all. My knowledge be taught to all. But with this condition, that nobody knows about me. So that was there, we call it uh, uh, the ikhfa. So they, don't, they, they didn't want to be known to everyone. As nowadays, unfortunately, uh, we are growing stage hungry at the social media and other sites. We want to be known by the people. Wallahi is all useless. If the intention is to please the people, not to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So khawf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is such a great thing which helps a person to do each and everything only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a person re realizes this thing, then he gets a true essence of the fear of Allah. Otherwise, it is all a pretension uh, <laughs> and a hoax by the source of which he is, he is, uh, he is uh, deceiving the people. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the, the tawfiq so that we have the, we, we develop the true nature and the true love for the hope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. And Sayyiduna Abin Abbas radiallahu anhu. Sayyiduna. Uh, somebody cast, somebody told him that Abshir bin Jannah, sahab ta Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fatal ta sahabatah, wa wulita amr al-mu'mineen, fa qawita wa addayta al-amanata. Actually, this is the conversation between Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas and Sayyiduna Umar ibn Khattab. One day, Ibn Abbas, you know Ibn Abbas, when he passed away, he was quite young. When Prophet passed away, he was quite young. But during his lifetime, Prophet made a dua, made a supplication for Ibn Abbas. Prophet made dua, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma faqtihu fi deen Oh Allah, you teach Ibn Abbas, uh, you grant him the understanding of deen. Oh Allah, you grant Ibn Abbas the deep understanding of deen. And you teach him the true meanings of the Quran, deep meanings of the Quran. And he's known as Raisul Mufassirin, the head of all Mufassirin, head of all commentators. And Sayyidina Umar Anhu. He was also knowing the importance of Ibn Abbas, the importance of his knowledge, and the implication of the prophetic dua, sallallahu alayhi wa It's also mentioned that whenever Sayyidina Umar, being the Amir al muminin being the Khalifa of Islam, he was supposed to discuss some, some important issue. Then he would call upon the elder senior Sahaba. Even the junior Sahaba were not allowed to attend the session. So all serious senior Sahaba were consulted upon. 
However, only one person was there who was quite younger. That was Ibn Abbas radiallahu Many a times, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu who realized that the senior Sahaba, many of the senior Sahaba, they, they don't want Ibn Abbas to be among, among the sessions. Not that they dislike Ibn Abbas, no, just considering his age, that he's a quite young guy, and we are supposed to discuss here the grave issues to make them realize the importance of Ibn Abbas on the basis of knowledge. One day, there was a session held by Sayyidina Umar Dilani. He invited the senior sah Sahaba and also Ibn Abbas. Sayyidina Umar recited a verse. Uh, he recited the surah. إِذَا أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَقْرِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا Surah Al-Nasr Sayyidina Umar Adilana asked the Sahaba what is the interpretation of this verse, of this surah, of this chapter? What do you understand out of this chapter? So almost all the Sahaba, they said, actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this chapter the victory of Islam, the glorious period of Islam, and that the people will enter into the Islam in flocks and crowds. That's what the surah says. After everybody gave his opinion, and almost all the opinion was around this, that is a glad tiding, is a good news that the people will enter into the Islam in flocks and crowds. Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he referred, he addressed Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas, O oh, Ibn Abbas, what's your opinion regarding this chapter? You know what he said? He said, the Surah, Surah Al-Nasr, it conveys the message that Prophet has to leave this dunya now. If you see the linguistically, the, the word to word, there's no such thing mentioned over here. But you could find one is surface meaning and other is deep meaning. You could go deeper into the meanings and get the pearls and gems out of it. He said, Hada khabaru wa fadi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Actually, this chapter conveyed the message that the Prophet is now leaving his dunya. From how, how he could infer this, how he could derive this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when, when the help and victory of Allah comes, and you'll see the people entering under the fall of Islam in, in crowds and flocks and groups. Now people have entered into the Islam. Now the truth stands clarified. The truth stands defined. Now we glorify your Lord. Astaghfir, seek his forgiveness. Means now it's time you have done your job. Now you seek the istighfar so that you leave this dunya. Then the Sahaba they realize yes, said Umar, if he brings him to the session, the important sessions, he's doing this right because his understanding of deen is quite deeper, is quite stronger and substantial. And one day said this, uh, and so they were having close affinity with each other. Ibn Abbas and Sayyidina Umar And one day, Ibn Abbas he said to Sayyidina Umar Jannah. Let there be a glad tidings of Jannah for you. Jannah is waiting for you like this. Why? Because you are always in the company of the Prophet. And your companionship was for a long period of time. Sayyidina Umar is among the earliest reverts to Islam. So he saw a long period of torture and persecution in Makkah and a long period in Medina also. So that's what Sayyidina Ibn Abbas Sayyidina referred to. He said, So your companionship with Prophet was prolonged. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose you to be the head of the affairs of the believers. Aqawita, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted you the strength. amana, but you fulfilled all the duty. You could discharge your duty rightfully. Faqala Umar. But Sayyidina Umar Sayyidina Amma tabashiruka iyaya bil jannah. As far as your glad tidings of giving me of jannah. Oh wallahi. Law anna li ad dunya bima fiha. Lakta daytu bihi min hawli ma amama. Amami qabal an a'lam al khabar. فَأَمَّا قَوْلُكَ فِي أَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فَوَاللَّهِ لَوَجِدْتُ أَنَّ ذَلِكَ كَفَافًا لِي لَا لِي وَلَا عَلَيْهِ مَمَّا مَا ذَكَرْتَ مِنْ صُحْبَةِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ عَلَىٰ وَسَلَّمُ فَذَالِ So Sayyidina Ibn Abbas mentioned three things. One, glad tidings of Jannah be to you. You achieved the companionship of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and you became the Amir al-Mu'minin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose you to, to be the head of the affairs of the believers. Then Sayyidina Umar Adilanhu, his level of khawf, his level of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was so high, he analyzed these three things. He said, Amma tabshiruka iyaya bil jannah. As far as you are giving me glad tidings of jannah is concerned, O oh Allah, law anna li ad dunya bima fiha, lakta daytu bihi min hawli ma amami, qabalan a'la bil khawf. He said, if Wallahi by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he possesses all the dunya and whatever it does contain. If all dunya along with all its belongings, if I possess it, if I possess all the dunya and whatever it does contain, and left day to, I would give all in ransom. I would all spend in charity before I listen my my fate, before I I am, I am told my ultimate destination. So he was so much fearful of his deeds. He was so much fearful of the Akhir. He said he would prefer first that if all of dunya he would possess, then he would give all in charity before he will listen his fate, before he will listen his results to save himself of any untoward happening. This is the first thing. And second thing, for Allah, as far as your reference towards that I, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose me for the affairs of the believers is concerned. Or simply as far as my amir, being my Amir al muminin is concerned. Wallahi, by Allah. I, I wish Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't discuss anything about, about it. La li wa la alayya. Whatever good I did, I don't ask for any reward, but whatever flaws there are on my part, I don't want either, either of them, any of them to be, to be, to be held responsible for. So whatever I did, or good or whatever I did bad, I want it to be just hushed up, not to be asking about it anything. And as far as as far as your mentioning of my companionship with the Prophet is concerned, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is the only hope with me. That is the only hope with me that Allah will forgive me because I have been blessed with the blessed company of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is a man to whom Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said many a times, Abu Bakr and Umar fil Jannah. Abu Bakr and Umar will be in the Jannah. In many places, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I entered the Jannah. While walking in Jannah, I saw a beautiful, amazingly beautiful palace, studded with the gems and pearls. And fascinated by its beauty, I wanted to enter it. But when I wanted to step in, I was stopped. I was informed that it is for one of the Qurayshi, one of the young men of Quraysh, Sayyiduna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, considering the beauty of the palace, I thought with myself that uh, definitely I am Qurayshi, I'm, I'm young man of Quraysh, definitely this might be for me. 
Then Prophet I asked who this man of, who this young guy of Quraysh is. This palace is for. They said it is for Umar ibn Khattab Such is his level. But his fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was tremendously strong. And uh, as far as fear of Allah is concerned, one legal point has to be noted that uh, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wajib upon us. It is wajib. It is not mustahab, manroob, or recommended, or likened. It is wajib upon us to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, as far as this is the legal obligation of us. And this is the first stage among the stages of spirituality. First stage is fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But again, let me repeat it, that this fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't mean uh, a kind of negative meaning. Rather, is a positive force which develops, which, which develops the passion and eagerness in a person to get closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the fear and fill up our hearts with his fear. Beautify our hearts with his fear. Beautify our soul and our all existence with his fear. Amin ya rabbal alameen. Jazakumullah khairah. See you inshallah in, in our next session with other important discussions regarding the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as of now, subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanaka Allah wa bihamdihi, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atum fi dhikr. Wa ahwayyakum, thank you very much. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yisifun, wa salamu ala al-mursaleen, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.